aspects of um, ovarian and follicular development, starting with the uh, parts of the female reproductive su uh, system. Here you have the vagina, right? This is a muscular tube, and it gives rise to or leads to the cervical cap of the uterus. This is the cervical cap of the uterus. This is the cervical area, and this opening here marks the external os. As we travel past the external os, it becomes the uh, cervical canal, and then the internal os leading to the body of the uterus. This is the body of the uterus, and the uterus has three layers. The inside layer, which is called the endometrium, the thick muscular wall, which is called the myometrium, and the outer layer, which is called the perimetrium. The ovary here and over here. The ovary is attached by the suspensory ligament out over here and the ovarian ligament inside over here. Above the ovary is this yellow broad, uh, excuse me, yellow mesovarium ligament, and underneath the ovary and uh, ovarian ligament is the broad ligament. Here, the broad ligament, the mesovarium, the ovarian ligament, the suspensory ligament, and the ovary. Now, during uh, ovulation, when the oocyte leaves the follicle, it enters into the fembrae of the fallopian tube. This is the fembrae, travels into the infundibulum, and then into the ampulla and then into the region that's called the isthmus, which connects to the body of the uterus. Again, in, uh, fembrae, infundibulum, ampulla, isthmus, body of the uterus. <coughs> Follicular development. This is the ovary, this is the ovary, this is an enlargement of the ovary. The outer germinal epithelium, and then this inner tunica albuginea right here. Everything other than these follicles is called stroma. So if it's by the cortical area, it's called the cortical stroma. If it's by the center, it's called the medullary stroma. Now, follicular development under the influence of FSH. These are the primordial follicles. Notice that as they get a little bit larger, you can see a layer of fecal cells surrounding the follicle here. That marks the transition between primordial follicle and a primary follicle. As it continues to develop, you'll see an antrum form, a hollow cavity, and it becomes a secondary follicle. It continues to develop and becomes a tertiary follicle or mature graphene follicle. At around day 14, per, uh, the level of uh, estrogen rises and LH is released from the anterior pituitary gland, causing this follicle to rupture. This is a ruptured follicle. Here's the follicle. It's ruptured. The oocyte travels out and then into the fembrae, the infundibulum, the ampulla, the isthmus, and the body of the uterus. Now, when this follicle ruptures, it becomes a gland called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum produces progesterone, which stimulates endometrial vascularization. After about 10 or 11 days, 15 days, the corpus um, luteum becomes the corpus albicans and is no longer functioning. It doesn't work anymore. The level of progesterone drops, and that prevents or it causes devascularization, marking the beginning of the menstrual cycle, as you can see here.